Megascan Studio is a standalone tool for creating photoreal, tileable surfaces very quickly. It's seamlessly integrated with the Megascans library and enables you to fully customize and mix any surface scans you download. So let's have a look at how it works. First, enter your Megascan subscription login. You'll only need to do this once. Next, we'll set up the Megascans library path. This is where all your downloads will be extracted. It can be a local or a network drive, shared repository, and so on. And lastly, let's point to our download path. This should be a web browser's download location. Okay, we're ready to create a new project. So, select New. Here you set up your project, the name, surface size, texture resolution, and shader workflow. You can change this whenever, so will it okay for now? Alright, this is the viewport. You rotate with Alt left click, zoom with Alt right click, and pan with Alt shift left click. Let's open the material browser. It's empty right now, so let's download something. I'll go to the Megascans library and search for a surface. I'm searching for a cool looking clay, but you can choose whichever surface you like, of course. Let's go over the downloaded settings quickly. 2K will do for this test. Context should be real time. Workflow and microsurface can be anything, it doesn't matter. And finally, let's make sure all components are enabled. And hit download. The zip will automatically extract the Megascan Studio. There we go. Click to add. Alright, let's modify our base surface layer. I'll break it up with some height noise. Uh, this will allow for more dynamic blends as we add more layers. Let's go add another layer, the same way as before. Pick whichever scan you like the most. I'll grab a stone surface. All settings always persist, so now we'll just hit download and Megascan Studio will automatically extract the scan. Let's blend it with the clay. Okay, we have our first basic blend. Let's tweak it. First, I'll match the albedo. For simplicity, I'll preview the albedo. You can also press the number keys to cycle between all the preview modes. Okay, let's customize the blend. There are many cool options to dive into, so let's take it from the top. Threshold lets you move the active surface up or down. Radius controls the softness of the blend. You can use the detail slider to introduce sharp surface details into the blend. You can also control the opacity of the active surface. I'll skip the more advanced settings for now. You can tweak the glossiness of the surface, for instance, to make it look more wet. Lastly, I'll offset the surface a bit to find a good sweet spot. You can use these techniques to basically blend in as many surfaces as you like. But next, let's try out the liquid layer. I'll lower the threshold, increase the radius, Tweak the gloss and I'll introduce some surface variation. You can also modify the cloudiness of the liquid, as well as change the color of the particles. Next, let's tweak the moisture settings, like general spread and glossiness. You can also modify how much the moisture darkens the albedo and how the liquid smooths the underlying surfaces. You can also add a simple solid layers to break up the general look of the material. So let's do that. I'm basically just creating a random noise that I'll use to introduce some wetness here and there. And there we go. Okay, I'm almost done with the surface. At this point, I just want to go back and tweak some settings here and there. Bring in a little bit more clay. Make sure the stones are blending nicely. I'm gonna decrease the liquid influence quite a bit. For fun, I'll just check how the surface would look without some of the features we set up. Okay, we're done. 
Before we export, let's look at the general settings you can modify. We'll start with ground size. You can change the size of your tile wall at any time. Here I've changed it to 1x1 one one meters. Let's also change it to something higher. Here we've generated a fully tileable 4x4 four four meter surface on the fly. You can also instantly change the work resolution at any time. I'll set it to 8K to get all those scan details to really pop. For my purposes though, I'm more than happy with a 2x2 two two meter surface at 4K resolution. You can also switch between PBR workflows on the fly. And if you want to maximize performance, play around with the downsample settings. You can also change the tessellation whenever you want. For instance, to preview the material on a flat plane. Or on a densely tessellated mesh. Let's also inspect all maps before exporting. You can select a map from the list, or simply use the number keys to cycle between them 1 through 9. So, albedo, cavity, gloss, roughness, normal, displacement, AO, and metalness. You see slightly different options depending on which PBR workflow you are using. You can also preview your material under different lighting conditions. You can select an HDRI from the list, or simply press the up and down keys to cycle between them. Another useful feature for reviewing your materials is the tile button. Click it to see how your material repeats. You can also press T on the keyboard to toggle this mode. Alright, it's time for export. First, simply set the export name and location. Then set your export resolution. This can be higher than your work resolution. Lastly, to export, you can either load an export preset or create your own. Let's create one. I'll name this map RMA. Next, I'll expand and configure the different channels for this map. You can set it up any way you like. You can also set the gamma space per channel. Let's add another map. I'll name it Albedo and simply hook up the Albedo channels. Now, if I'm happy with my export setup, I can save it as a preset. I'll simply name this RMA Pact and hit save. You can load default presets as well. I'll simply clean this up and then load the defaults. Okay, we're all set, so let's export. And we're done. Now would be a good time to save the project. A really cool save feature is Save as Surface. This allows you to bake down your entire project into a single material that you can load into new projects as a single layer. Simply go over the settings, set the material category, and add any tags you see fit, and save. If we jump back into the browser, we'll now find our custom surface ready to be used in new projects. And that's it! This tutorial has covered the basics of the new Megascan Studio toolset. It's a simple but powerful addition to the Megascans library and allows you to have fun and be creative with any scans you download. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.